right? I've got a couple uh, more to write and I put those stickers on personal notes for, you know, whoever referred one of their friends. And maybe I'll sit somewhere, I'm reading this book, Blue Ocean Strategy, which is an amazing book. Blue Ocean Strategy, which is an amazing book. Uh, my mentor, Albert, um, gave it to me and he said, dude, you've got to read this book because it's freaking amazing because it's going to widen uh, whatever you're trying to achieve, whatever you're trying to accomplish. So if you got questions, post them below here on Instagram. I'm going to wave back at you at YouTube. I've got four people watching, but hey, ask me anything. It could be, I mean, on YouTube, what is success to you? What does success means to you? So let me know. And uh, Rick, my man, how you doing, man? We've got to be studying now. We've got to be studying. Hey, Rick, quick message. Uh, Joe told me that you're like a little bit frustrated with those bundle tests because they're like hard or something. Dude, just trust the process. What I'm trying to do is prepare you for the worst, right? Prepare you for the worst, man. So it's going to be hard. You know, the road to become an alpha slice, that road is bumpy. Uh, so we got to take it one test at a time, one question at a time. So don't be frustrated, man. This is training. This is training. It's not, you know, like it's not the NCLEX, it's not the real test. So you got to chill down, try to learn, you know, whatever I'm teaching you because, dude, we're going to freaking make it, man. We're going to freaking make it. All those hard work, all this hard work that you're trying to put in, you know, you get, you got you to collect the fruits of your labor on your test day. So I'm not sure you still have maybe like 11, 12 days left. You've got to, you've got to, like sprint all the way to the end of the marathon because dude it's gonna be freaking rewarding all right if you guys got questions for me put them down in the comments i'll be happy to answer them let's see where's the comment section here on youtube all right in the meantime until someone puts a question uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna write those personal notes for the people who referred who referred uh, uh who referred students to my program because dude you spreading the word man you spreading the word about anklex web i freaking love your face all right so i'll be sitting here and i'll be peeking here and here you know on my first phone my second phone by the way this is youtube hey youtube meet meet instagram right there that's instagram not sure if you guys see but yeah instagram instagram meet youtube I ain't just, just kidding, man, but yeah. Whatever questions you've got, just, just post them. I'll be happy to answer them. And you know, if you know anything about me, you've been following me for the past, um, for the past two years, you know, I've been on YouTube for like two and a half years, maybe. But yeah, man, I'm always authentic. And uh, I always tell you the truth. You know, a lot of people underestimate hard work. Uh, what it requires for you to succeed in life, especially in the United States. But yeah, um, Sema, she's saying success means you can have whatever you want in your life. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but success, success has a different definition. If you want to define success, like how you can get to success, how can you get to having whatever you want in life? How you can, how can you get there, right? How can you get there? What's the roadmap to success, right? What's the roadmap? What are you going to do on a daily basis to get to success? So that's the question. What is success to you? All right, so the first person actually who referred someone, her name is Rosaline. Rosaline, you are freaking amazing because she referred her friend. Both of those girls are on the November class, which we started last night. And you guys are amazing. So, Rosaline, thank you. Thank you very much. Rosaline. You are a rock star. You are a rock star. Yeah, so if you've got questions, YouTube, post them. Uh, this is going to be around like 15 minutes or so. So, and listen. So, it doesn't have to be NCLEX. It could be entrepreneurship. It could be... Uh, whatever the case might be so it could be entrepreneurship it could be uh you know nursing in the united states could be NCLEX. it could be family 
you know, relationship. I'm not an expert. I've been married for nine years, but, uh, you know, I'm not an expert, you know, still do mistakes here and there. It could be, it could be kids, family, schools in the United States. I mean, whatever the case might be, man, it could be taxes. It could be, you know, anything that comes on your mind. And by the way, if you didn't like the stream yet on YouTube, like if you didn't like the stream yet, I mean, what are you doing? Click that like button. Come on, man. Come on, man. Right. And ask questions. All right. So let me see, Rosalie. Uh, so what's what's a book that you've read recently? I'm currently reading Blue Ocean Strategy, uh, which is which is amazing so far. Uh, so what, what kind of book are you reading right now? The book that I read before this is called Financial Fitness. Oh, my God. I recommend that book to every single person out there. OK, every single person you should you should read Financial Fitness. It's an amazing book. Even if you are saving money, you're being conservative, um, you start investing, whatever the case might be, dude, you can do more when you read that financial fitness. It's just going, it's just like going to the gym, right? Like physical fitness, going to the gym, doing those reps, you know, uh, being like eating well, um, drinking your water, whatever, you know, you contribute towards your fitness, right? physical fitness there are other aspects that you can contribute towards your financial fitness right so i'm gonna hi you back wave back at you guys here on instagram let me see i, I saw a question here hey julie how you doing weenie how you doing how long should i take to sit for the test after i finish the self-paced program hey my recommendation is two to six weeks i tell everyone you know you finish the self-paced program, which is around four weeks. It's built to be taken over four weeks. You know, not a lot of people listen to me. And, you know, some people, they speed up those videos into like, uh, you know, two, two times the speed, which is totally fine. But what I want you to do is literally, you know, grasp the confirmation, the information and take your notes and make sure that you are applying those notes. Right. So when I tell you to memorize, to repeat, you need to do those stuff. So some people finish it in like 25 days, maybe 20 days. So whenever you finish it, my recommendation is that you test six weeks afterwards, right? Why? First off, you'll take advantage of the study plan. I'll put, I'll, I'll give you a detailed study plan day by day. What are the things you need to study on, on a daily basis? How to review the webinar strategically. I'll break down your uh, weaknesses on the weekend tests. And then uh, I'll send them to you and uh, that way you will know what are the things you need to focus on and then I give you extra 500 questions challenging. You hear my, my students, you know, who pass the NCLEX, they always talk about the bundle package, right? The bundle tests because those, those tests are freaking awesome. You know, I'm not saying that, but you're going to see the same exact topics and even the same wording. I don't want to say the same, but similar wording to the to the questions that you're going to see on your NCLEX, right? So it, it's it's amazing, but I would say two to six weeks, and it depends on how well you are doing on your weekend tests, right? Julie, how to get Ferrari and be successful? Hey, it's a lot of work, Julie. It's a lot of work, but you know, getting the Ferrari, it's it's. It's a, it's rewarding, right? It's rewarding, rewarding. Uh, obviously, it is for marketing purposes as well. Um, but you know how to get a Ferrari. There's something called you know people don't know about credit, right? So people, oh my God, the feed drop. Um, it's awesome course. Three cheers for you, Julie. Lol. Yeah. So so th th there was like nine people on YouTube and they, they just vanished into like one person. Oh, nine people again. Oh, maybe it's it's the connection or something. All right. So we're back. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that here in the United States, when you talk credit, there are different sorts of credit, right? So there's personal credit, there's business credit, and there is auto credit, right? Auto, auto credit. So auto credit, not a lot of people know about auto credit, but, you know, the way you build your business credit is way different. I mean, your personal credit is way different than building your business credit. And everyone in the United States should own a business. It doesn't have to be a successful business or, you know, um, a business that's losing money. But you need to own a business because that will give you tax advantages, right? You, you just like you just open an LLC for like 
it would cost you around like 500 600 dollars a year but there's a lot of tax advantages that you can get from that i mean the government will actually if your business loses you, the government will actually pay you money especially the first uh two or three years right so that being said let me say hello hello here wave back wave back wave back but that being said yeah everyone should own a business but there's an auto business right so and i mean an auto credit so an auto credit different from personal credit different from business credit and having an auto credit i mean you start with with a basic loan right so when i came to the united states i was an avant nurse avant offer you a credit a, a auto credit line or credit loan or whatever you call it for 25 25 thousand dollars right i did not use the whole thing so i bought a minivan um, a minivan, Dodge Caravan, uh, for seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars, and that will start building your auto credit. And you know, you pay your bills on time. Then all right. But if you want to buy a Ferrari, like three hundred thousand dollar Ferrari, right? The the bank's not gonna give you a loan, right? They, they won't give you a loan if your previous car was was a mini. Uh, you know, like a minivan, they, they, they won't give you a $300,000 loan if you have a mini caravan that's your, so you need to build your credit. So you go from um, like a minivan to like maybe a $30,000 car and then maybe to a $50,000, $60,000 car, maybe a $100,000 car, and then you can finance exotic cars, right? So that's one way. And that's, that's the way that most people, you know, um follow but dude it takes you it takes you like six seven eight years to do that the other way is to put a huge down payment which is 50 percent or more right so 50 percent or more down payment then boom you can get they they will finance you for a ferrari or an exotic car that you want but yeah if you don't oh connection is poor i think we lost instagram but yeah if you're um or maybe you lost YouTube as well. But yeah, if your uh, if your credit, um, you can get any exotic car that you want. But this is the way to get an exotic car, right? Um, but again, uh, I'm not sure if that is recording. But you know, I'll talk to YouTube for a second, and then you know we'll shut this off. Um, I'm aiming towards 15 minutes. But if you've got questions, let me know. Uh, so how do you buy a Ferrari? Well. You look, uh, you look in a Lewis Miranda. I'm not sure what what is that. Well, you look in a Lewis to to, to the Ferrari. Th this is how you can get any exotic car, which is building your auto credit or uh, putting a huge down payment, which is uh, around 50% or more. All right, I'm gonna end Instagram here. Uh, I'm sorry, Instagram. All right, save to story. Yep, and then here. Um, YouTube all right let me see uh, what but wouldn't you be in debt all right KP uh, listen so there's good debt and that, that's why I learned in the United States you know a lot of people don't know that but there there is like good debt and bad debt right and that that gives you an ROI which is a return on investment that's a good debt for example I recently bought four units right I recently bought four units and I got a mortgage for those four units, right? I put 25% down and then um, I got four units. Dude, that's a good debt because this is a multifamily, four units. Those are four apartments that are gonna spit, you know, passive income into my bank account on a monthly basis, right? So let's say my mortgage payment is around, for example, right? It's around, uh, I'm gonna say $500, right? So if my mortgage payment is around $500, and then I've got four units, every unit is giving me, let's say $250, right? So four units, $250, that's a thousand bucks every single month. And those units pay for my mortgage and they put extra money, which is passive income into my bank account, right? So. I pay my $500 and then I have an extra $500 that I put in my in my in my bank account. What does that mean? That means this debt, this mortgage that I got is a good debt, right? So any debt that you you put on on, on your business or your personal 
and it provides you with a return on your investment on your investment that is a good debt okay yeah same thing for a car if you if you if for example this ferrari if i use this ferrari for marketing right uh then what happens is uh, what happens is you know i pay i pay my monthly bills or my monthly you know payment from from the return on investment from showing up showing up with this car or marketing through this car sheena that makes sense but it's still a liability it's not a liability i mean as i said there is there's a huge book when, when you want to see if it is an asset or liability you know you don't want to think as a middle class mentality and you know a lot of those multimillionaires out there they leverage that for their benefits right so you need to know how to leverage that so in this scenario that i gave you the four unit if i got a mortgage to buy four units right i'm not buying a single family home like i'm not buying the house that i live in right i'll never buy a house that to live in right uh, my house i'm always renting because i don't know where the opportunity is i i want to be able to be to move you know wherever i want to whenever i want to but um yeah, if, if, I mean, it, it's a mental shift. If you think it's li liability like buying four units and, you know, paying your mortgages and then putting money in your pocket, if you think that's a liability, dude, you need to, to shift your mentality. But no, it's not a liability. Uh, if there's a return on investment, you're good. Let's see. When I finish uh, this month crash course and sit for the exam, a big pass as a result, they will say, suck it. Then I'll say success small waiting for today's webinar. Yeah, definitely, definitely, Sheena. Listen, you just need to put in the hard work, right? That's it. You know, when people ask me, how did you start? Like, when when was the turning point when you started uh, succeeding, right? It was passing my freaking NCLEX. That's it. That what as a nurse, that's the turning point. The turning point is when I paid my dues. I passed my NCLEX, then uh, I passed my English test, and then, you know, I started my immigration immigration process to the United States. So it all starts with you, if you're a nurse, it all starts with you passing your NCLEX, and then, you know, from from there forward, it's, it's, uh, dude, if you it, it, just learn, just, invest in your self education right just invest in your self education all right guys uh i don't see any more questions here so i'm gonna end this love your faces and see you in the next live